Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, as Nathan mentioned, my name is Andres de la Cerda. Uh, the reason for my name is I'm originally from Brazil. I moved to Canada about eight years ago to attend university at Trent University, where I have my degree from biology with specialization in health sciences, and also my PhD in the health science sector as well, which I got it last year. Um, I am one of the co-founders of Noble Tech, and Noble Tech is a company based out of Trent University, and we are an algae biomaterials-based company. So we've been doing research for about uh, seven years based on my co-founder's science fair project. Yes, high school science fair. You heard me right. <laughs> He's been doing this for about seven years. He won many international awards based on his research, including what's known as the Junior Nobel Prize. He got to take shots with Watson and Creek, so that's not too bad. No, just Watson. Creek is dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> just Watson. But, so well, i never done that, right? So it's, it's, it's been very interesting, and it's very nice for me to also be along uh, with the company and learning every day a little bit more about different sectors and how algae can impact those different sectors. And I know that a lot of people, when they hear the word algae, they just roll their eyes like, no, not again. Because 10 years ago, as you know, there was this huge um, algae boom, not bloom, uh, on the sector because there was a lot of money invested on uh, algae biofuels and algae innovation. But from the amount of money invested, not that much innovation came out. So a lot of people were disappointed. So whenever we say algae, people, they, they have some hesitance there. Uh, so here, just for the sake of we're all on the same page, I'm a teacher at heart. I taught a few classes at Trent, so I always like to start from the basics. Uh, we have different types of algae. So seaweed is a type of algae, and there's a difference between macroalgae, so you can see it without a microscope, and microalgae, which is what we work with. And you can see they look very different, they have different characteristics, but one of the things that's very interesting about algae is that they've been around for many, many, many years. Uh, and because of that, oops, I'm not sure what I did. So <laughs> because of that, they have been able to survive the most extreme environments. They have adapt to be able to, um, just his magic touch, there you go. Uh, they have been able to adapt to survive to those environments. So that's why they've been around for such a long time. So this is a tree of life. So you can see that from the very bottom there, before we had the differentiation between uh, animals and plants, there are already some algae species uh, showing up and they're known as protists. So they have both animal and plant characteristics. So and because they have been on survival mode for many, many years too, there's a taboo around algae. Algae has been associated with algae blooming, uh, green-blue algae, we which is toxic and can kill whole environments as you can see here. Also people in the real estate market absolutely hate algae. They want algae to be extinct because it's depreciating the value of their properties they're trying to sell, right? So if you have a cottage, you, do, you don't want algae in front of your property, right? Uh, but the reason that they do this, once again, is because they, they, were learned, they learned to thrive in different environments. Because of that, I, s <laughs> I keep doing something wrong. Ah, okay, there you go. Uh, because of that, we are able to harness some of that power from algae. So as you can see here, there are algae materials that can go all the way from bioplastics, uh, also, you can have algae as your lamp, so at the same time you recover some CO2 that's in the air. This is a living tree. Uh, this is actually existing. So there's algae growing inside here as a sculpture. There is animal feed algae. And this, for example, is an example for the mining sector, which algae is being used to recover some of the heavy metals. And of course, algae biofuels. So just a little bit more of... Uh, background on algae and why they're able to be used for the mining sector, for example, is that, as I mentioned several times, algae have adapt to be able to survive in different conditions. And one of the mechanisms that the algae has is on its cell membrane or cell wall, they have proteins or other uh, compounds that act as magnets. So they bind to different uh, metal ions or different compounds. Some algae, what they do, they also have another survival mechanism that once the metal goes in, it kind of just spits it out or does something else with it. But uh, this is where I'm going to focus a lot of my talk today. Here, you're no strangers to this, at least most of you guys in the room. The issues around uh, algae and in mining, for example, and mining specifically, is their tailing spawns. A lot of their product are being loose, the tailing spawns, so just product just being lost 
or now the government is going cracking down on people trying to have more strict rules so they have to really regulate their tailing spawns. Me being from Brazil, we had the mining disaster uh, in November last year. And now to be able to get a license to start a mine in Brazil is much more difficult because of what happens. So you're, you have to come up with solutions even before they give you a new license for, um, for mining, unless you bribe them probably, then you can do what you want. But I, I am allowed to say that. <laughs> Uh, but the goal of uh, the algae in the industry, again, was to not only have uh, an environmental benefit to clean up some of those targets that are needing to be removed, such as arsenic, but also try to have an economic upside, which will be the recovery of those metals that are being lost. But this image here, again, uh, this is in the UK. It's a university working in partnership with their version of the National Research Council, where they are diverging water from the tailing ponds, growing the algae in that tailing ponds, uh, which is not very ideal because it takes a really long time for the algae to grow under those conditions because it is stressed. And also, if you take a look at this image, you can tell that's a very controlled environment, very clean, uh, very high tech. But as most of you know, this is what normally looks more like having a mining site. So translating what's here and putting into here, very high capital costs. Uh, it's a lot of training that has to go on there to the operating standpoint. It's not easy, training algae is not easy uh, to just drop it there and let it do its thing. The algae, because it's growing the tailings water, yeah, it does uptake the uh, arsenic or the gold that's in the water, but it takes a really long time. It's not very efficient. Um, and of course, the, the, uh, you're dealing with a live organism at the end of the day, so if it is dead, most times it does not work. The pros is that it is a natural, it's a safe organism. So here, as Nathan mentioned, this is what we grow, and I'm gonna tell a little bit more about the difference. So if you're not full enough from your lunch yet, the powdered one, you can try it. It actually tastes pretty good. Uh, the other one is also edible, the chipped ones, uh, but it tastes a little bit more fishy because it has a lot of omegas in it. So I'm just gonna pass it around. <laughs> it's healthy. So I'll, I'll, take a, uh, I'll take one too so you can, I can show you. Is I'm not trying to poison you or anything <laughs> like that. So the powder one again is the one that you can uh, give it a try. Just be careful because it comes out quite a lot. It tastes pretty good. Nathan, you're the next victim. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry? How long do we wait? Oh, for me to die? Uh, it's instantaneous, don't worry. <laughs> tried it last Friday. Yeah, he's still alive. <laughs> the chip one as well, if you guys want to eat it, is a little bit more of a strong taste. I'll just pass the chip ones over here as well. Oh, you guys already have it over here? So it is safe and it's natural, right? So uh, hopefully no one will remind me later today of this, but we have our own approach. So Noble Tech, based on the products that you're seeing today, have developed our own technology to be able to cater to the different sectors, including the minor sectors. So what's different about us is how we process our algae. So for example, as I mentioned before, the membrane of the algae normally has proteins or different compounds that act as magnets for different metals and metal ions. In our case, what we do, whatever you're seeing now in front of you, this is dead algae, it's not alive. Uh, this is our product. So whatever I just ate, this is our product. Uh, this product is just focusing on this part of the algae. We extract the high value materials in the front end and we use this as our filtration ability. So it's not really a bio remediation, it's more of a biochemical remediation because reality is it is a biomaterial. It's not you having to worry to train your operators to grow algae on site, taking a really long time to be able to have uh, that recovery back. So here's a schematic of how we do this. So we have our off-site growing facility where we grow the algae. Uh, it looks very much like as a brewery. So people just walk by sometimes and just say, oh, this is, you're making beer, right? No, nah, not quite. Maybe one day we'll go into the beverage sector as well. But we brew our algae there. And as I mentioned, we can remove the biomaterials that are inside, such as omegas, um, EPA, DHA, also some uh, proteins, omega-3s. We can remove them and use those products 
for uh, animal feed, for example, so an alternative for fish meal. We can use it for the nutraceutical markets. And then the shell that's left over goes into uh, the filtration system. So the way that I explain it to you, thank you very much, is as if we're growing an organism, chopping it all up, dissecting it, so the guts go somewhere, everything goes elsewhere, and the skin is being used for the filtration. In this example here specifically, uh, it is shown a municipality because this also works for phosphorus removal, but the idea is the same. We can either grow uh, or have the organism, the shell of the organism, uh, being put into a holding tank, which is just like a chemical, so what you saw, like a powder, and then it's put into contact with the water, and then it's removed at the end there, and we can just take care of the algae, can burn it or bury whatever you want to do with it, or what we can do is actually in our facility, let's say you are interested in removing gold. We want to recover that gold from your tailing spawns. We have the ability, it's part of our trade secrets, so I'm not allowed to say it how we do it. <laughs> we have the ability to train that algae to make more of those binding compounds that will bind more specifically to gold. So once you put this algae into your tailing spawns, we are able to recover it and put it back to the top of your processing. And the difference is that, again, the algae is not alive, so no one has to worry about growing the algae. Um, and second, it, it's, it's a chemical. Sorry. It's a chemical, so you don't have to do much with it. Uh, other thing is the timing. As I mentioned before, a lot of these algae technologies, it takes a really long time to see any results. With us, it's a matter, uh, depending on the target, it's a matter of half an hour up to four hours. So the municipalities, for example, it takes only uh, four hours of retention time, and it is a continuous process. With arsenic, some of our preliminary results, it was half an hour. We were able to remove significant amounts of arsenic, more than half. So it's been very, very interesting what we'll be able to do so far. So this is our hero over here, so our organism. Uh, we've been talking it in about algae, but it's actually a protist, so that's why it's very easy to manipulate it. Uh, or sometimes it's a little bit more difficult, but again, we have years and years of research on it. Uh, there are other side benefits to it, uh, other than just being environmental. Uh, whenever we're growing it, we do uh, capture CO2, release O2. Uh, we can have biomaterials generated from it. So the sustainability side is also very strong and very present in our day-to-day -day operations. But I joke that we are very sneaky because we are environmental, but we are capitalistic as well. So <laughs> we want to help the environment, but we also want to make sure that we all make money, right? I'm, I'm not greedy. I just want to make sure that I can pay my bills. That's all. <laughs> and the nice thing about this algae, too, is that once again, we, can, we have developed a technique to be able to train it to capture different organisms. And when I mean train it, it does not involve genetic modification just yet. That's down the pipe. We might be able to uh, look into that. Today is just how we tap into the algae's physiology which is quite unique. And also, uh, that's one of the reasons why we're able to bring this to the uh, technology readiness level that it is today, much quicker than compared to when you were trying to genetically modify some of these organisms. So to, uh, to date, uh, we have the protozyme system, which is what uh, we saw today, the product. So this is the protozyme, this is what that is. And we also have built a filtration unit, which uh, Nathan had a chance to see as well. So there are two shipping containers that does a diversion of the water that we talked about today. So uh, if you have a pond that you want to see treated, we can take those shipping containers on site, diverge the water, pump it into our system, do the treatments, uh, collect the algae um, at the end. We can burn the algae if you wanted, we can bury, or we can put it back on the top of the processing to recover materials. Uh, and there you go, that's, that's how we do it. Uh, and that's called the proto-EBS uh, filtration system. So today, we have a few things that we are focusing on. Oops, right there. Uh, we are a startup company. We are three years in the make, uh, incorporated 2013. So we are not quite ready yet to go and sell the product for you. So I, I'm not pitching uh, my product. I'm here to explain what we do. Uh, we are currently working on increasing our capacity for production. We have a location today, which is what Nathan visited. We are able to produce 80 tons of the algae per year. It sounds like a lot, but it is not enough for what we have to do. We've been working with several different companies with samples that we've been analyzing and testing 
and that's able to cater that. That just gives you an idea on how much samples we've been, <laughs> we've been working on. Uh, but the goal is that in the next six months or so, we'll be able to find the right partner where we'll be able to test this technology. And the nice thing, you always leave the, last for, the best for last, I guess, is that, remember that I mentioned the filtration system that we can take on site and do all that? Depending on what the customer has on site, we don't even have to take the shipping containers anywhere. What we could do is just have the dried product, so the biochemical, shipped on site, sprinkled to the water, which will bind to the different components that the client is interested in having removed or recovered, and it would settle to the bottom, for example, and then the clients can treat the sludge as they would normally would, or if they already have technologies on site, such as a centrifuge, we can just take the powder, throw it, and it comes out very easily with the centrifuge technology, which can be then back again to be put on the top of the processing. Or we can bring our own centrifuge, because we have um, a third-party technology from the US where it does the separation for us. And I joke because I'm, I'm fairly short, and the unit is about this big. So if I had a pickup truck, I could go and test the technology for you. So um, that's the basics on the algae innovation. Uh, I, I'm very glad to see the room full. Algae is not scaring people off yet. And we're very uh, happy with what we got today, and we're looking forward to what the future holds for us. And if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer those for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>